Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about a Smith & Wesson 500 Magnum that I have received from a friend of mine that seems to be acting up on him, and we're going to be taking a look at the fix, uh, or at least one possible fix for this, and I'll, I'll sort of talk about a potential other fix that I didn't seem to be able to get to work for me, um, probably because I don't really have the right tools for it, but uh, either one is uh, is not too difficult. This one especially is easy if you can find the parts for it. But uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the problem. So what he was experiencing was uh, the cylinder would sometimes be difficult to take out and put back in, like so. And as you can see, we are empty for safety's sake. And the ejecting uh, the spent casings is difficult. As you can see, it kind of sticks there, okay? Um, which tells me that uh, this isn't quite aligning properly and this is sort of sticking. So the, the uh, extractor rod here, which is this guy right here, is most likely bent. And we can take a look and see I can hold this still and adjust the light for you. Let's adjust this so you can see. Um, yeah, there we go. That's good. So if I sort of half cock this and I spin, you can see that rod move up and down in that channel there. Definitely bent. So what you can do, and this uh, would be a lot easier on smaller, less robust firearms rather than this massive hand cannon that kicks like a rhino is bend that back into place. And you can do that with a drill press and a uh, dial indicator to measure the bend and a hammer, well, you know, a brass mallet or a brass hammer. But you probably need to have a pretty heavy duty drill press or Magnetic lathe, one of the two, in order to hold it in place. I do not, so the uh, the chuck would loosen up every time I gave it a whack. Luckily, we have a spare that I got from Midway USA, and you can probably find it some other places, but that's the only place that I found it that had it in stock for this model. But so let's get into this. Let's go ahead and fix this bad boy. First thing we're going to want to do is take the cylinder out. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and turn this over. Before we get into that though, I kind of want to talk about how does this possibly happen. Now I'm not sure if this is the cause in his case. This was a brand new gun when he bought it. And it's a massive gun, it just hit the wall. Um, a lot of times you'll see in Hollywood movies, somebody will eject the, uh, the cylinder here, throw some rounds in there, and then whip it to the side and have this fall into place on its own from the uh, from the momentum and the weight of itself. That's usually not a good idea, and the reason is obvious. It can bend the extractor rod. It can also hit some things in here, and there is actually a little damage in here, and I'm going to be fixing that in a different video. But uh, just so you know, don't do that. Use your hands. Okay, let's go ahead and take this apart. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take this screw out. And I'm going to move my camera so you can see better what I'm doing. I've got a pretty awesome alien tripod thing here. It allows me to get these angles. Okay. I'm just going to be really careful with this because I don't want to mar anything or strip out the screw, so I'm going to be nice and gentle and slow. This usually isn't too difficult to process. This is probably the easiest part of the whole thing. Come here, little guy. There. And I'm just going to set that aside somewhere where it won't get lost. Now, backing it back up. push the release forward and just go ahead and slide slide this out okay now we have an empty frame 
I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way. Okay, so now what we're left with is this guy. Now on other model revolvers, this comes off all on its own. Unfortunately for us, in this case, we have this end piece here, which prevents it from coming off, and we're going to, to take that off. Now keep in mind that all of this stuff is uh, threaded backwards. It's a left-handed screw. So we're reversing our age-old adage, righty-tighty-lefty-loosey, and now it is righty-loosey-lefty-tighty. When I got this, it was on there pretty good. Let me adjust our focus here. There we go. It was on there pretty good. Could not get it off by hand. Uh, so what I ended up doing was using a vise with wood blocks. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get that into the shot here. Because it's not not a particularly large vise. Now, this kind of gave me a little bit of a scare because of how tightly I had to clamp this down in order to get it to come out. Um, sort of hear the wood cracking under it as it gives way. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do on this end is you're going to want to brace the extractor star back here. If you have snap caps, awesome. If you have spent shell casings, that works too. If you have five, that's preferred, but I only have two, so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to act like I'm screwing it in, and as you can see here, maybe. <clears throat> got the rod rotating and the end piece not. Okay. And that's what we want to go for. Okay. And then we got this guy and I want to set that to the side. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to take our rod here and stick it in, and I'm going to tighten that down. And that may end up needing just as much tension as the other part did. So you don't have to worry too much if this is a 500 about crushing the rod using these pieces of wood because it's seriously stout. And once again, lefty, tighty, righty, loosey. This piece here, which as you can see, flat side is toward this and away from the cylinder. And there's a screw or a spring here. And I'm just going to keep that in there. You don't have to keep it in there, but I like to so that I don't lose it. And just move that out of the way. Okay. And then we're going to release this. this arm will come off. And there's our bent piece. So now we're going to take our not bent piece and reverse everything. Now just to make things easier for myself, I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here. and tighten it down just a little bit, right about there. This doesn't have to be nearly as tight as it was when we took it off. And 
I'm going to make sure that this spring goes in here. Now, in, in case this stuff fell out, okay. Yeah, let's just say that everything fell out. Here's our uh, extractor rod, all this stuff, the star here. Okay, this only goes in one way. It's kind of like a puzzle, right? So you can see which way it goes in. And then you've got this flat end here. Come on, focus. You've got this flat end here that fits in this D-shaped hole here. Okay. And there. I'm just going to go ahead and put these back in to brace that star because I don't want it going anywhere. And then I'm going to turn this over, keeping everything in place. Put the spring back in. Okay. And then we're going to find our little piece here, flat side of the little lip goes toward the arm, okay, so you can see, flat side is on that side, and that spring goes in, and there we go. Once again, we're going to reverse it and spin it like we're unscrewing it, which actually screws it into place. And there it is. I'm going to tighten this just a little bit more so I can get a nice good... There we go. There. That should do it. Yep, that's on there. And now for the end piece. And that's going to go on counterclockwise. If I can get this in here. Okay. There. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that down a little bit. Come back here, block. Charlie Brown, you blockhead. Okay, and just a good torque. That's good. Okay. And there you go. Now let's get this guy out of the way. Bring this guy back into frame. Now this part is deceptively tricky. Let's see if I can get the lighting just right for you guys. And the reason it's sort of tricky is because it uh, doesn't necessarily fit if it's all the way out like this. Let's see if I can find its sweet spot. It wants the cylinder to line up with this spot before it will go back in. And there we are. Last part is this. And I would caution against checking. If you did do the bending back into place method, I would caution you against checking that, uh, that cylinder or extractor rod channel there for play without having put this back in first because I have noticed it to wobble a little bit. Now this screw, <laughs> we're kind of having to go back into our old mode because this is righty tighty lefty loosey. Okay, now I'm going to be really cautious with this. I don't want to strip it out. It doesn't have to be overly tight.
Okay. All set. Now, it's time to go take this thing somewhere and shoot some Tyrannosaurs. I'll see you guys next time.